for everyone joining us on Zoom, thanks. We're getting started right on time today. Um, today we're talking about, well, it's Valentine's Day, right? Happy B-Day. Yeah, right? So we're going to talk about a topic that's so near and dear to my heart. Love. Those of you that know me know that my entire life lives in a series of checklists. Um, I love writing lists. If you ever sat beside me, I have lists for how I make my breakfast in the morning. I have lists when I have like how to pack my kids' lunches. I have lists on how to do my monthly financial process. I have a list on what I do after I stop hitting record on this video. And then what happens with it, I have to send stuff to Isaac. I have to make a YouTube cover. I have lists for everything. And that's why I get a lot done. And we get a lot done consistently. So I'm gonna hopefully introduce you to this topic today. Now, some of you might already be on my team. Are any of you guys list makers already? Yeah, good. Okay, so don't ignore today's presentation. Hey, maybe I can like go 10X on this and really level up. Because I'm gonna tell you, I've been coaching and training people for over 10 years now, going to all kinds of training events myself. And this little pattern I'm gonna teach you today is the thing that helps people get from 10 to 20 deals a year to the next level. Without this, your career kind of breaks around two deals plus a month because we get busy and so we stop doing all the things we think we're just gonna remember, right? But there's a lot more to it than just that. But if that's the only reason we get excited about checklists, a very boring topic, by the way, one that I like to geek out on, but it seems boring on the surface. It's like everyone wants to come to the social media <laughs> lesson, they wanna to come to the marketing lesson, but the checklist lesson is like, okay, I guess I'll just go back to work today. But if you put some effort into this, you would permanently improve everything that's going on, always. Home and business. What's going on over here? All right. Thanks, man. Appreciate uh, the discreetness, Jamie. All right. So questions. You know we like questions to start this off. Let's think. Would you like to be more consistent and efficient? Yes. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Audience participation today. I love it. I hope it's yes. If no, then, I mean, you can just tune off right now. If you like things kind of, everything feels on fire all the time, we're dropping the ball on stuff, we don't know where everything is. Would you like to be more in control of your time? Yes. Yes. Oh, wow, enthusiasm. I love it. Um, how would you like to improve your communication with everyone, not just your clients, but with everyone involved in your life and business? No? <laughs> You like being misunderstood? You like people not knowing where you're at with things? How about this one? We got some people in the room. How would you like to have less complaints against you or potential future legal issues in your career? Anyone? Absolutely. Yes. I'm not bragging. Well, I am. But 15 years in the business, I've had zero complaints ever filed against me and I've never had to go to court or talk to a lawyer about any one of my transactions, ever. And I've been an individual agent, a team leader, and own a brokerage that was doing 750 plus deals a year, and I never had to go for a problem even as the brokerage owner, okay? Checklist. <laughs> if you've ever had something go wrong in your career, that should be the one and only time that thing ever goes wrong ever in the future, if you have a checklist. We're gonna get to that soon. How about would you like better reviews, more repeat, more referral business? Yes. Everybody wants that one, right? Guess how you get there? By having good systems and processes, by delighting people, and by doing it consistently. Because if you delight one person and they refer you to the next person and you give that second person a whole different bag of service, that's not what they were expecting, right? The only way to get consistent repeat and referral business is to do the same thing for everybody all the time. Delight everyone the same way. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. If you buy your first client a massive closing gift with a bottle of champagne and tickets to a hockey game and then they refer you their best friend and then for their closing gift you get them nothing, or you think you're going to get a good review? No, right? So systems, processes, checklists. Okay, so let's talk about them. Question, interaction in the audience here today. Is there anything? I saw some hands up earlier. Give me some examples. What do you have a checklist or a system for? To-do list, follow-up. Come on, Josh. That's the most vague answer ever. Josh said to-do list. <laughs> do you have a system for making a to-do list? Okay, I'm going to trip you up today. What did you have? Follow-up. Give me one or two steps on it, just for the audience. Call right away. Okay, so uh, for a follow-up, I'm going to call them back. I'm going to set them up on an automated search. Maybe I'm going to schedule another follow-up. Yeah. Cool. Systems. What do we have? I Sam. Have, I have an office checklist, so it's just like uh, check MLS, zero my emails, follow-up with current clients, and then 10 to 15 blank spots that I fill in as my day goes on. So anything that pops up in my head goes on the sheet, and then that way I don't forget it. So it's like you can easily be doing one process and then forget the other four or five things you have to do. So it's just 
Okay, so for, the, for all the cameras, I'm gonna repeat a little bit of what Sam said. So he's got a kind of a starter checklist of a few daily tasks to do, and then he gives himself a bunch of blank lines under it. So he always gets these things done, and then he has space to write things as they come up. A little self-created system, love it. That was it. We had a lot more hands up earlier. Now I only got two checklists. <laughs> Nothing? Do you have a checklist on how you work out? I see a lot of people going to the gym. Do you just walk in there and pick weights and stuff? Or do, before you go in, you know what you're gonna do and you're gonna follow certain reps, sets, weights. Yeah, I see Michelle's nodding, that's good. Isaac loves working out, he follows the system there. Uh, what about? Groceries. Groceries, yeah, thank you. You make a list before going into the store? But you can do it the other way, right? You could walk into the store and get inspired by an ingredient and try, which way is easier, right? <laughs> which way brings you home with the ingredients you actually need to make your food this week? Okay, so I love that we exposed the lack of checklists because I saw a lot of hands earlier and then really we're not actually doing a lot of things by a system. And if you can start to build this for yourself, you're gonna get a lot more done. Home, life, family, friends, whatever, however you wanna get this done, it's gonna work. Now I'm gonna challenge you. I knew it was, this was gonna happen. So, tell me why. Why don't you? Procrastination. Okay, because you plan on making a system and then it's always gonna be done tomorrow. Love it, love the honesty, Jen. Why else don't we do this, even though you've heard me say it for like three or four years? I feel like I'm on autopilot. I feel like I know what I'm doing and I just Yeah, you're the master of memory. My system's up here, I just do it, love it. Why else don't we do it, Morgan? Oh yeah, the, the, uh, the perfect plan, yeah. that it never gets done perfectly. The system's too complicated. I'm happy if I have a plan and it doesn't go to plan and I feel like I didn't accomplish it right. Yeah, for sure. That's probably the overcomplicated plan. Yeah. We know what those are about, hey Isaac? Yeah. Uh, other reasons we don't do this? Eric? Um, Yeah, I just went back to the, the Josh method. Yeah. I'm just gonna wing it again, even though I had. <laughs> you said it, not me. Any other excuses? It's fine, we're all friends here. They're all valid. I think it's good to acknowledge why we don't do things so you can kind of hear it. I think one of them that comes up for me a lot is like when you're already busy, to take the time to make a checklist and a system, it's gonna take twice as long to do the thing. If you're gonna like, okay, I'm gonna write down everything I do and then do it this way next time. It can feel like it's more work to follow a process or a system. You know, when I tell you guys to put notes in your CRM, even though it's gonna save you time in the future, but now it takes time, right? And I live in now, I don't live in the future. So that's another one that I've always had to struggle with because I'm always feeling overwhelmed. It's like, I'll just get this done now, I'll make the system tomorrow. But then guess what, tomorrow I'm busy too. <laughs> so that's the procrastination. Okay, so I asked uh, the Google or the OpenAI system to tell me the most important reasons to make checklists. I've been doing this with all my work every day. <laughs> uh, here's what it told me. Number one, consistency and efficiency. It makes sense, right? If I'm gonna follow a system, I'm gonna do something the same way all the time. Also, if I'm gonna follow a system, I'm probably gonna get more efficient at doing those steps in order. I'm gonna probably put those steps in a smarter order. I'm not gonna do C before A and so on and so forth, right? So consistency, I get the same output. Output, man, I'm tongue tied today. I get the same output as I do things, but I also start to get better and better and be able to either accomplish the same things in less time or do more things in the same time. I can get more stuff done with a checklist and deliver a higher result to my clients. Second, time management, right? By following checklists, I put things in the right time of day. That goes on tomorrow morning's checklist, right? This is what I do now. This is what I do on the way out of an appointment, but that's really for tomorrow before I get back to the office. So I put things in the right place. Third was improved communication. This is a huge one. If you haven't noticed yet with your real estate license, we're actually just in the communication business. We're the ultimate middleman or woman. So if you're not good at communication, you're actually not good at real estate, no matter how good you are at writing contracts. Our job is to tell people things and then listen for the other thing and tell the other person that thing and then tell the lawyer that thing and then tell your broker that thing. So systems really help you do that or even keep a record that you did it. Because if you forget to forward the closing package to your client, 
you actually have broken RICO rules, right? They don't have a copy of their contracts. If you forget to forward a, a, a finished signed document to your broker, then you might not get paid on a deal. Our job is communication. If you forget to book, confirm the appointment, oh, guess what, on our real estate board, I don't know if it's this way in Burlington, if you forget to cancel an appointment, you can be fined, right? If you book an appointment to view a home and then you no-show on it because you forgot to cancel it, because canceling the appointment with the listing agent was not part of your system. So a lot of these things can really help. Now, the plus side of good communication, guess what? That's why we get reviews, repeat, and referral. 99% of the time is communication. That's all people want from us, right? Fourth, risk management, which is a fun term for staying out of court. <laughs> I manage my risk, which is, means I avoid it completely. Checklists should help you avoid the complete disaster of a bad contract. And sometimes we complain the brokerage we work with has a very high level of checklist for compliance on contracts. And it feels annoying sometimes to have that contract bounce back to you all the time and with a little error here. But their process is keeping them, the broker, out of court at the same time saving you. But wouldn't it be nice if you had the same level of checklist so by the time it was sent to them, it never got bounced back to you, right? Risk management. Um, we go back to that one too, risk management. Like you have a checklist for how you list a house, the way you walk through a house, the things you look for as disclosure, the things you're supposed to know as a realtor, your legal obligations, the order in which you get paperwork signed matters if you ever find yourself in court, right? And then last but not least, improved client satisfaction. Because if you can design a system that creates satisfaction, then all you have to do is repeat that system. You don't have to be out every day feeling like, did I do a good job? You know you did a good job because your system is doing a good job. So all these reasons. Now, good news, before you get overwhelmed, like Jeff's gonna make me make checklists all week, is just like Josh said, you already have a checklist, right? Because everybody here kind of knows what they're doing. You don't just run around all day. You have something, but the thing is, you're not following it. You're making a new one every day. I don't know about you, the to-do list. Who, that was, you said that right out of the bat, right? So making a to-do list is a form of making a checklist, but then you cross that one off and it goes in the garbage can and then you make a brand new one for tomorrow. But you know when you make a to-do list and you're like, oh, actually I should do that first or maybe I should do that because I'm headed over to the grocery store and I'm going to Hamilton tomorrow, so I might as well do that tomorrow, right? You, you do this all the time. But the problem is then we think of these as one-time use documents. What we want to do is start to save these things and use them over and over again. This is how we get started. I actually, uh, those of you, I went to school for computer programming uh, way back in the day. And that's all, that's all it is, is designing systems and processes. Do A, then B, and if this, go to C, if that, go to D, then loop back to E. You know, and that's all the whole trade is, is making systems and processes. So when I started doing this, I got a little geeked out on it when I made my first, I'll tell you a little side story. So I was a single agent and uh, I had just, brought on a, a buyer's agent, we would call it back in the day, but a brand new agent. I met him in a coffee shop and I said, hey, I'm, I'm generating a ton of web leads. Um, if you wanna get started quick, instead of having to do this on your own, why don't you come work with me? I'll share the leads with you, we'll work together. And we, boom, we had a team, right? Uh, I didn't know what I was doing. And it was just the two of us, no administrators, no help. And then I was flying across the country to all these conferences and I'm at a conference and I always take a one big takeaway whenever I'm at a conference and this one, I noticed that every single person that was making more money than me seemed to have at least one assistant, if not more than one. And I was like, okay, I need to be like these people. So I hired an assistant. And I was like, okay, now what does the assistant do? <laughs> they just wait beside me all day. And so they were like, okay, what we need to do is we need to write down the entire process a client goes through with us. And then beside it, I put the initials of either me, my buyer's agent, or my admin. Who's gonna take care of that? And that was our very first system. One list for a seller client, one list for a buyer client. This is their whole journey from find us on a website to close and get their keys. I wrote down every single step. I probably have it up in one of those notebooks up in the library up there because I don't throw out anything. And on, it was on a plane flight at home. I just put initials, JT, JM, uh, JK. She changed, she got married while we were working together. I had to get her maiden name back in my head. Um, and that was our first system. But this is then, from there, I actually thought, what if I could write a checklist, don't laugh at me, please, if I could write a checklist that taught me how to write checklists? It's like, ha, ah, then I've broken the matrix, right? Now I've the one checklist to rule them all. And I wrote it. I'll share it with you, you guys ever want to see it. 
<laughs> it is. It, it's literally a check. It's a, it's a process for writing processes. I'm like, I've unlocked it. We're good now for life. And I'll walk you through it in basics. But this is not too hard. Okay, here it is. Next time you do something, slow the F down and write down what you're doing. Right? Boom. You've made your first checklist. Okay. You can stop there, but then next is use it, right? And the next time you use it, notice where you got it wrong or where you can make it more efficient. Because the first time you do it, you're not going to cover all the bases. That's step two. Step three is you keep doing that until it covers 99% of your situations. Now you've got a firm checklist. You're not changing it all the time. Then what you want to do is write like a summary paragraph above the checklist. And I call this like an intent statement. And it tells you why the checklist even exists. That way, if you ever need to look at it or you have to go off the checklist, you have the essence. The reason we have this checklist is for legal compliance. The reason we have this checklist is to delight our clients. So if something's happening that's not on the checklist, you're like, ah, but the point of the checklist is to delight the client. So let's do this, right? Now, the cool thing that if you do this right, if you ever have ambitions of having an assistant or having anyone ever take over anything you do, they can't take over what you do, right? please write my to-do list for me every morning. It's like, okay, dictate it to me then, right? <laughs> I'm looking at you too. Now, Kara was Josh's assistant for a couple of years. She's now a real estate agent out in the field. Going to have her own checklist now. Um, but if you have a really good one, you can literally just hand it to someone else and go, I need you to do steps 10 through 20. I'm going to do steps 1 through 9 and 21 through 28. We're a team now. Boom. Right? And I, and I want to pause here for a second and, and remind people, it's not about the tool. People get caught up in, should I use Trello or Basecamp or Monday.com or all these things that say they're going to save you time. A checklist is a piece of paper, all right? It's a thing in your notepad. It's the reminders app on your phone. It doesn't have to be overly complicated. That stuff helps if you have a big team and lots of moving parts. But for yourself, 90%, I have a slide for this later, but 90% plus of my checklists are in my notes in my phone. That's it. They're just there. And I just look at them. I don't even print them out. I just pull them up on the screen and I do what it says and then I stop. It's not like I'm actually checking them off and there's accountability around it. That stuff's all for bigger operations, big moving parts with lots of people. So we just keep doing that. A couple bonus steps for checklists is you want some quality assurance steps at the end. Verification, you know, audit your own files every once in a while, make sure you're actually following the checklist. And then also as you're using it, what you want to do is make sure that every once in a while you kind of honor the checklist and make sure it's still reflecting reality. If you notice you're skipping steps all the time, then take them off. If you notice you're doing things now out of memory again, so you're, you've got a pretty good checklist, but we always do this extra thing. And I just didn't take the time to change the checklist. So either doing this all the time, so every time the checklist doesn't match reality, we just change it. Because if it doesn't match reality, it's almost as useless as, you know, a calendar with 75% of your appointments in it. It's not going to really work well for you. Okay. Two main types of checklists. Um, actually, I'll hand these out now while we're talking. I'll give you a couple examples here. I'm going to keep one, and you guys pass that way, and just gonna pass that way. This is probably uh, what I have on the front here, and I'll, on the live stream, I'll send this to you in the, uh, the replay email. All it is is a couple sample checklists. And so the front is what I would call this an example of like a daily or weekly action checklist. So it just has Monday through Sunday across it. And I just make these in Google Sheets. I can send you the actual file or the, I mean, this isn't too hard to recreate. But little chunks of this is what I'm going to do personally in the morning. This is my workday morning. This is my workday afternoon. And these are the things I do. And then you can hang on to this all week and by the end of the week, you should see lots of either green or check boxes or whatever you want to do. Yes, put yes or no in them. The key is if you're not going to do something on a day, black it out to begin with. Because there's a difference between I didn't intend to do it versus I didn't do it. Those are two different things. So if you always do your seller communication on Mondays, say, then the rest of the week, the line item of seller communication is blacked out because you're only doing it every Monday to check in on their open houses or whatever. So that's one system. The other one is a different type of system on the back. I actually pulled this. This was when we finally digitized. This is the story I was just telling you. This is only half of it, by the way. It didn't fit on the page. It kept going all the way to close down here. But you can see we had everything from the in-home meeting to the signed exclusive to the signed MLS to the new listing marketing checklist. 
And what we had, I, I just deleted for you, but in this middle column, responsible is where I had the name, either me, John, or Julie. The target date it was supposed to be completed by then if it was completed. And this is kind of when it went from paper to a Google Sheet. This is like from 2012 or something. I found it on my Google Drive last night as I was making this presentation. So these are just examples. They're not the holy grail. This checklist, I'm not saying follow these. I'm saying make your own, right? And if you work somewhere like a big brokerage or a team, you realize your brokerage or your team has their version of the checklist, but that doesn't alleviate you from having your own as the agent. What do you do, right? You don't have to recreate the team leaders or the marketing departments or the brokerage's checklist. You want to create your own. I'm sure, Jeff, you have a checklist for what you do once you finish your next YouTube video, yeah. right? You got to write a description. You got to get the right tags. You're probably going over vidIQ, testing it, doing the SEO optimization, check your thing. And then a week later, hopefully you're going back, checking the watch time. So that stuff all gets a lot easier to do if you have a system and you're not just like, I'm going to remember how to do it the same every week. Okay, so two, wait, two ways to think. We're going to get wrapped up here in a minute. Two ways to think of checklists. They're either recurring. That means they're happening on a regular time interval. That could be daily, weekly, monthly, right? Uh, the weekly one for me is kind of the minimum one. The daily one's kind of hard because we do have different days of the week. So Monday, that's the one I gave you there, a Monday through Sunday weekly action checklist. But think the monthly one's kind of different. Um, some of the things I do with my monthly, I do a monthly financial recap every month. It's way better than waiting to do it in April. So I, I, I could share you mine. It's a little personal, but if you ask for it, actually. But I go through the money I earned, the money I spent, and not down to the dollar of groceries and stuff, but I'm talking through my holdings company, through my real estate earnings, setting aside the HST. Every third monthly checklist is quarterly, right? So I'm filing my HST. The annual one is a little, got some different steps. Um, also on my monthly checklist are more of the big audits, you know, check over this thing, um, check how th certain things are doing on marketing and other things. Um, so those are the recurring ones. The other ones are triggered. So the difference is the recurring ones kind of happening week in and week out, but a triggered one, guess what? It's triggered by something. So I got a new listing. I made a new video. I just signed a new contract. I put a new client in my CRM. Uh, all these things start something and then the checklist is gonna start from there. So it's like every time the trigger gets hit, a new checklist starts and we follow it through. Does that make sense? Those are the only two types there are. It's either recurring on a regular basis or it's triggered. So when you're thinking about a process, you just have to ask yourself, where does this go? Does this go in my weekly checklist, a monthly checklist, or does this go when X happens, right? Now, this is the best part. Um, to Morgan's point from earlier, the overcomplicated checklist. I said, you want to start from reality. Don't start from utopia. I would rather you sit down the next time you're going to do something and document it versus sit in a bubble and dream up a process. Does that make sense? Write down what you're already doing. Don't dream up the perfect system. That's why you won't, you won't follow the perfect system. It's going to be overwhelming on day one. Anyone ever tried to plan out their perfect week? <laughs> How does that go, right? Right off, the, right off the bat, you're like, ah, five minutes in, screwed, <laughs> right? Yeah, we'll do it next week. Thanks, Jen. Um, so document what you're already doing, and then this is what you do. So it starts very small. This is, don't make it intimidating. It might only be four steps. It might even only be two steps. And it might seem ridiculous it's so small. But then, tomorrow, you have a great idea. Whoops. You're like, hey, wouldn't it be nice if every time my client, you know, uh, sold their house, I sent them a request for a review? Wouldn't that be awesome? And you're like, Hmm, maybe I should put that on the firm offer checklist. Great, go put it there, right? So every time you have a good idea, you just simply add it to the right list, right? Instead of it living forever on your to-do list of tomorrow, we just go, ah, oh, great idea. What list does it belong on? Amazing, now it's there, right? My favorite one though, and I make videos about this all the time, is when you screw something up. When you screw something up, guess what? You think, where would this go on the list so this never happens again? I never have to experience this pain again. You learn your lesson one time. If you've ever screwed something up twice, please listen to this, right? You should only ever screw something up once in this business. Hopefully you don't. Hopefully you can catch it in advance, but we're not all gods, right? You're going to learn some things the hard way in this business, but that's it. One time. This will never happen again because it's on the checklist, right? Hopefully the one time you learn it, the consequences were small and then it goes on the checklist. But even if they're big, sometimes you got to learn big life lessons. Please don't repeat those ones. 
So all you have to think about, whether something good idea or something screws up in your world, is which checklist does this go on? And you don't have to ever worry about it again. Okay, and don't forget, you can have lists for life too. This isn't about business. I was saying, uh, my wife took a job where she was having to leave the house at 5 a.m. I all of a sudden became responsible for the kids in the morning. The very first day it was like, okay babe, walk me through the lunches, right? I got my notepad out, I'm like okay, Weston needs da 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 the mayor needs these seven things, right? Because they eat, they're picky kids and they eat different things. Great, every morning, just phone out, onto the table, okay, right? I'm gonna try to remember it. I got a hundred other things. I'm ready for these presentations. I'm worried about your guys' emails. So you can think about this stuff for life too. I have a little checklist up at my cottage. When you walk in, water valve goes on, this breaker gets turned on, heat gets turned up, right? On the way out, things get reversed. You don't wanna to have to remember all this stuff all the time. Life's easier if it's written down. Some examples. This is my favorite app. Use your own, but I'm telling you, it's not complicated. This is like digital paper. They're just written down. They're a whole folder of them. I have a morning routine checklist. I've regularly posted it on my social media if you want it. That's not bullshit made up. That's what I do every single morning. And I follow it and I make sure I follow it because I know it helps me. Uh, I have a checklist I was saying for what happens as soon as I stop record on this. I can load it up for you, show it to you. It says post apex production checklist. Monthly uh, morning social post checklist, right? Check the Google or my Google Sheet it tells me what to post today. Then I go to the Google Drive, I download it, then I go write a, a caption for it, then I put that into the AI and it rewrites it for me and picks hashtags. Then I post it on Instagram, then I tag Cameron, then I tag a bunch of you, then I post it, then I go to TikTok. The list is like this long. And I just do it every morning while I'm drinking coffee at 6 a.m. And it's a wonder that, you know, the engagement and everything's growing. Uh, monthly financial process. A lot of us could probably use this one, getting our money in order, right? Instead of having it be a source of constant worry. And I was joking before, my kid's lunch pack checklist, but really my message here is everything, right? Everything you put in a checklist no longer has to live in your brain and you no longer have to perform it perfectly on demand. Make sense? Okay, so I would recommend you start here. Start with a very simple weekly action checklist. Simple, not perfect, not all encompassing utopia, just simple, right? You wanna work out three days a week? Well, put it on Monday, Wednesday, Friday. You wanna do client outreach four days a week? You wanna make three social posts? Just start with reality, right? But then it's the consistency I've actually pulled this off. This is your scoreboard. A monthly one too is gonna help. And then I'd probably start as a real estate agent with a new listing checklist, a closing checklist, but in the middle, a offer checklist what you do from the time someone asks you to write an offer to the time that's either accepted or it's in the trash. Because there's a lot of moving parts that happen fast when someone says, I want this house. Or someone says, hey, I have an offer for you the other way on a listing. That's where we can get caught up. So if you have steps you go through, like, I don't know, if you're the listing agent, for example, I got a whole team of realtors here. Let's think about what would be on our, hey, someone calls you and says, hey, John, I've got a signed offer on your listing. What type of things are on your checklist to do? We all know how to do this, but I know there's nothing right now, but on your mental checklist, what do you do? So someone's like, hey, you have, I've got a signed offer for you. I'd like to present it. Where do you go into motion? And anyone? Anyway. I just, I register it. I tell everybody that's seen it that I have an offer. Awesome. So one of your steps is I'm going to go into the showing system, right? Whichever. Now we got to make sure that every showing Part of your system is that every showing is registered in there. Because what if someone just called you on the side and you gave them the lockbox code, now they're not in that system, right? They're just, yeah, what else would do we do if we get an offer coming in? Let the seller know. Yeah, we call the seller. Awesome one, right? Imagine you skip that step. <laughs> you're, you're like, hey, did you guys go over the offer? They're like, what? Like, right, I skipped send to seller. I missed that step. What else would we do? Oh, uh, Michelle, just for the mics, Michelle said, make sure that any future showings know there's an offer about to go down. Anyone ever missed that step in their career? I've been chewed out in the old days, especially before it was all digital and we were keeping track of all the showings by hand. I got in some big trouble, not sued, just big trouble with my broker. Um, okay, so you see these little things. The closing one is where you're gonna find a lot of your repeat and referral business because the, the peak experience for your client is at the end of the transaction. They're gonna remember how you left them. And a lot of us 
go firm deal and we move on to the next deal. And we forget that there's more walkthroughs coming, there's a closing date coming, there's all kinds of stress still for your client. There's files going over to lawyers, there's keys, there's moving trucks, right? And we forget about all that because we're off working on the next active deal. So giving yourself a nice strong closing checklist, you can put those dates into your calendar, remember to follow up those people, give them that service all the way through to their housewarming party and that's where you'll get your repeat and referral business. If you just go firm deal, lawyer's problem now, you'll probably have a lot of disappointed clients at the end of the transaction, no matter how well you served them before. Okay, so remember, checklist, we do this because of consistency and efficiency. I heard a lot of yeses, you guys wanted this stuff. Time management, improved communication, better risk management, improved client satisfaction. This is worth it and it takes a tiny bit, maybe 50% more time to do it. You gotta just slow down, write down the steps, you're doing it the first time, and then pull the list out the second time. By the third time, you're saving time, I promise you. Only the first time it feels like it takes a little longer. Okay, remember, uh, man, I've been bouncing back and forth with Apple. If you are a Google Android user, you can download my new app already. It's live on the store um, and it's free, um, but we should be live this week with the uh, Apple Store. Man, they're so picky. They told me one of my uh, windows was the wrong resolution. I was like, and they just found that on the seventh it was never a problem on the sixth review. They're like, oh, and by the way, we found one more thing. So like, okay. So we're hoping it goes live this week. Um, that's where all the replays of this are all stored. So you don't have to go search for them. Plus our new podcast is stored there. We're building in all kinds of new cool free tools and agent interviews. So go check that out. It's free to download. Um, I'm pretty proud of it. Um, also, I just got booked yesterday to speak at the upcoming Buzz Conference. So I'd love to see some of you there and perhaps on the Zoom. If you've never been, um, this is a wonderful industry conference put on in Mississauga. It it's brand agnostic, so it has nothing to do with any specific real estate brand. Everyone's welcome. I believe the tickets are $2.99. I am only one of a massive uh, day of speakers. So I would recommend if you're interested in getting out to something after a couple years of being stuck in our houses, go meet some other agents, hear a lot of good speakers. The theme this year is disruption. So all the talks are gonna be about, you know, the new, the new, new, what's coming, what's changing in our industry. And there's everyone from CEOs of brands. There's people that have traveled a lot, long way. The organizer, Virginia, has been a dear friend of mine for a long, long time. Um, and she puts on wonderful events. And then coming up um, next week, we're gonna talk about your own personal brand. How do you stand out in the sea of um, what did, San was it Sandra posted? 102,000 of us in Ontario. There's like over 100,000 realtors. Uh, there's like one for every six people or something. <laughs> no, it's not that bad, like 60 though, people or less, maybe 30 people. So you gotta be able to stand out, but we don't wanna confuse people either. So we're gonna give you some simple strategies on how to promote your name and face inside of the mess of your brokerage and your colors and your logo and all that. And then we're gonna be talking about sign calls. Uh, so sign calls is getting someone to inquire about a property, yours or otherwise, some of the best leads in the business. And it's a great opportunity to turn that into another buyer and keep rolling. So thanks a lot for joining me again today. We got out of here just on time. Please do some checklists on the Zoom replay. Look for this in the email and we'll talk to you next week. Let's go. Thanks.